Okay, so today's topic is while loops. Now, we have talked about for loops in the past, okay? Uh, but now we're going to talk about another kind of loop that you can use in Python, which is a while loop. Now, out of unlike a for loop, where a for loop runs a set number of times, a while loop actually occurs, could be once, could be three times, could be a hundred times. It runs until a certain condition is met, okay? And that condition, of course, since it's a condition, would be uh, would be a, a, a test, a Boolean test, okay, true or false. So uh, in this case, we have a program already up here that I've uh, copied over from number four, uh, number five, excuse me, on your uh, on your assignment 138. The first four things are your standards, you know, if you're working with somebody, greet them, you know, start your log. Uh, but like I said before, you don't have to submit, for this assignment, you don't have to submit your log, uh, but if you prefer to log so you can kind of keep track of things, that's fine too, uh, but you will not have to submit it. You can skip that step if you choose. All right, now in a while loop, any Boolean operator can be used, okay? Because we can look at this code, we could run it if we want to, right? But uh, we could just kind of take a look at it line by line and see what's going on here, okay? There's a function here called validate, and validate has no arguments, and then there's the first two lines are just two variables being initialized, okay? And a guess equals one, and that one is a string, okay? And the answer is hangman word. And then the fourth line starts the loop, okay? That starts the loop with the command while, and then guess, so in other words, this next line right here, this is our condition, okay? So this loop is going to run so long as the uh, guess value is not in the answer value, okay? So see how guess right now equals one? Is one in hangman word? No. So that means that this loop, this loop is going to begin, okay? And the loop itself is guess equals the raw input, name a letter in the answer. So in other words, here's a raw input function that's going to assign a new value of guess, and it's going to get that value from the user, okay? So the user is going to type something in, and then when they type something in, that condition is going to get checked again. So if they successfully type a letter in hangman word, then it will execute line six, thank you, and then it will end, okay? So let's see it in action. All right, so if I go down here, let's store it first. And we'll hit validate, parenthesis, okay? Name a letter in hangman word. So if I name a letter in hangman word, like the letter G, it'll exit, okay? However, if I run that function and I type uh, I, it asks me again. So see, it loops, okay? And I, of course, could probably probably throw in something along the lines of, uh, you know, try again or, you know, like, hey, you idiot, try again. No, it wouldn't put that in there, of course, right? No, we wouldn't do that, right? That would be me. That's see? a very useful, yeah. useful function. No, it's not. It's, there, it's certainly not a very useful function, but it's, cer it's definitely something that should indicate or indicate what a while loop does, okay? And there's other uses, of course, that you can you can have for a while loop. The benefit here is you can have it run as many times as needed, okay? Until until and of course you know depending on user input, it could run. In this case, it could run infinite if people keep typing words that aren't hangman word, right? And of course, these are fixed values. You could always change the function to have it type in the, you know. You can you can you can have it um, you can have it type have them type in as an argument what the word is you know if you want to do that too okay what so you, go ahead uh, what, if you name more what if you name more than one letter so let's let's try that let's see what happens okay so what if we type in let's say um, let's say we type in K O right okay it it, it 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 does not find okay because what because what is it looking for at this time okay. What's it looking for this time? A letter. It's looking for more than one letter. In this case, it's actually looking, it also considers the order of the letters too. So watch this. You know how we're looking for hangman word, right? If I type in N-A-M, like this, those are all letters in hangman word, but it still continues. Because what is it looking for? It's actually looking for this sequence of letters, okay, in this order. However, if I type in the correct order, the loop will exit, okay? So you can type in more than one, letter, right? But because it's going to be checking the sequence in this case. So if I typed in hangman word, it would actually exit. Okay? If you type in like G, uh, G -M -W, right? Same, it, 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 would, it would keep looping. Uh, it would keep looping. Okay? Even if I type, how about this? What will happen here? Will it keep looping? Yes. Because see, uh, see, case counts, right? We would have to, if we wanted to not count case, 
we would have to program that into the function. Okay? You haven't even done that, right? No. You haven't even told them how to do that? No, we haven't. We haven't talked about that yet. Okay. Yeah. All right, question, go ahead. So whatever you want them to write something, if you don't want it, Bless like you. So you see how it says name a letter in the hangman word? Mm -hmm. What if you want it to say name a letter and then like have that not play? Have something other than like, hangman word? So we could actually play hangman. Well, well, we can use the function from the previous activity. I believe it was one three seven where we used the the hangman function, where we could we could sort of play a game in hangman like that. But there's to actually have the game play itself, like like have the function do it all. It would require a little bit more coding. Okay, so all right, so let's go ahead and and take a quick look at another example of of um, a while loop. Okay, now we're going to grab. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, go ahead and grab this function. We're going to ignore the comments in this function because this is a different problem. Okay. One of the things you'll do in number six is you'll have to take this function that's that that you uh, that I've just grabbed and pasted here, and you have to make it a little. Oops, I gotta change the formatting. Uh, you have to make it the comments a little better. Okay. So uh, that will be one of your objectives in the actual thing. But let's go ahead and take a look at what the code is itself. This function is called guess winner, and the winner is a random choice of the players. In this case, the players are listed here. But the way this function is, is, is given, this function actually has what's called default values. And I want to talk to you real quick about that. You can, if you choose, when you write functions, you can assign certain arguments to have a set of values that it will go to if the user does not supply any. Okay, these are you could also consider these like optional arguments. Like you could list your own. In other words, in this case, you could list your own set of players in this function with different names or more names. Um, but if you don't list anything, it will default to Amy, Bill, Kathy, Dale. You understand? So that way, the function will run even if you don't supply arguments to it. Okay, it will just use those four names. But if you want to use a different list, you can assign a list and then use that list, or you can type in the list yourself. Okay. Now, the winner. The first thing that happens is the winner is a random choice of players. We'll have to import the random function. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do that up here real quick. Make sure we get that. Okay. The winner will be a random choice of players, and then it's going to print. And I need to import future. Yes, I do. I need to import the future print function as well. I forgot to copy that. PLTW using the future print on us and again. All right, so guess which of these people won the lottery, and then it's going to say for P in players, explain this P plus, um, and explain that. That's right about that. Guess equals one. Try to guess the person. Print the guess, and if not, once you get it, it'll return that guess. So let's run that function and kind of see what, what we're talking about here. Okay. So let's start. We. Uh, Need to st oh, I'm still in this function. I gotta exit out of here. Hang on a second. There we go. Okay, so let's store the new value. All right. Oh, what do we have here? We have a. Oh, whoops. That's because I didn't. Uh, yeah, we just gotta indent this three spaces, three more spaces. On there. One more there. Because it's gotta match the indent of the rest of the function. So copy and paste doesn't always get uh, doesn't always work as well as you think. Uh, sometimes. So that's okay. Okay. It's a live show. All right. So we run that function. Here we go. Okay. So now we got to call that. And what was the name of the function again? Guess winner. And let's go ahead and just use the default values. And you'll see how when I didn't supply the argument, and once again, it defaulted to those four names, right? So guess which of these people won the lottery? Amy, Bill, Kathy, or Dale? What do you think? Take a shot. Amy? Oh, Amy did win. Look at that. We got it right in the first try. Look at that. Okay. We guessed it. We got one guess. All right. Now we could also say we could try with another list. We can try it with, you know, we could try it with Louis, John, Antoine, Michael, Michaela. All right. And I wish oh, I've got the bracket. Okay. All right. So which of these? Oh, and I forgot Elijah. Let's, I'm going to run the function again after this. I forgot Elijah. Okay. Sorry, Elijah. I think I think, <laughs> I think John won. All right, you think John won? Yeah. All right. No, John. Sorry, John's not a winner. Okay, let's try Michaela. 
Oh, Michaela won it. Look at that. Okay? Michaela's the winner there. All right? So see what happens. What does this function do? Basically, it's a guessing game. Okay? It's, it, it, there's a list. And like, like I said, there is a default list that's possible. And then you just, the user has to try to match, guess which name was randomly picked. Okay? Again, is it useful? Probably not. But again, it's another example of a while loop. Okay? That while loop this time, look at the, if we look at the function, is basically analyzing the raw input being equal to the winner. In this case, in this case, it's going to keep looping if it's not equal to the winner. Okay? Once it does equal the winner, then the loop stops. All right? Does that make sense? Now, the syntax for this is not as, not as hard either. It's, it's really pretty quick. Everything you indent after a while and you put the colon, everything you indent after that will loop until that condition is satisfied. Okay? Now, in this assignment, you're tasked with writing one function. Okay? And that one function is going to be a number guessing game that you will implement with a while loop. Okay? And you can probably already strategize how this is going to go. Okay? Your, your job, and I would, like you to, I would also like to challenge you by, by uh, making the function a little more, use, a little more uh, uh, customizable. The, the, the standard function in number 8, and if you're looking along with me in number 8, I can kind of drag it in and show you what I mean. Okay? Here's number 8, right? Uh, if, if we were to run the function, go guess, it would ask and say, hey, there's a number between 1 and 20 inclusive, which means 1 and 20 could be possible as well. Type in your guess. When you type your guess, it's going to tell you if you're wrong. It's going to tell you whether you're too low or too high. Okay? It'll tell you whether you're too low or too high. And then once you get it, it'll tell you the number and then how many guesses it took you. Okay? So the function itself is going to need some sort of if-then statement. And you can guess right now that the while loop is probably going to have to have a condition of the guess not equaling the answer. Okay? And that answer, of course, could be a random number. Now, that function can look very similar to the function in the previous, previous line. But like I said, you've got to add in some if-thens so you can print whether it's too low or too high. I also would like to challenge you to make this function have an argument that is the highest possible number. So instead of 1 through 20, maybe you can call go guess 200, and then you can guess the 1 through 200, okay? And have it do that. So I, that, that, that's a little bit of a, you know, that's a little, little higher order for you if you want to give that a shot, okay? Um, I, I, I do challenge you. Now, when you get to number 10 and number 11, these are things you're going to write. And, and, and number 11 does involve you pairing up with somebody uh, to, to play a quick birthday guessing game. Okay? Um, number 10, there's a link here. And I just want to, I'm going to hit this link just so you can see. Okay? Think of this as sort of like a demonstration. Okay? And these are different ways that computers sort data. Okay? And you can click any of these to see it in action you can also click the name to kind of see what does it mean what is a bubble sort and there's also look at this python code like as well I'm not saying you have to use it i'm just saying there's a little bit more of like what you're what you're looking at as far as sorting methods okay now the question itself is going to ask you which one is fastest for certain types of lists on the left side you'll see a randomly a randomly sorted one and if we hit play I said, oh, I had to enable JavaScript on my, I have a script blocker on my computer. I have to enable it. Sorry. Anytime I go to a new site, it automatically blocks the scripts next to that script blocker. All right, so if I press random on the left, eventually it sorts that list. And when you see the red arrow gone, that's when it's done. Okay? So which one was the, so you're, you're going to ask, the question you'll be asked is which one was the fastest for that. Okay? And whichever one you see finished first is the fastest. Okay? And if there's a list that's almost sorted, which one's the fastest? Okay? So you see that that's kind of that's kind of the, the, the crux of that question. Selection's still going. Still going. Still going. Okay. So and you'll get the idea. And then of course you could also compare methods by each list as well. So you can sort of see out of you know which one is the bubble method best for, which one is the merge method, you know, best for, and so forth like that. Okay? So question 10 kind of deals, uh, deals with that. Now, number 11, as I mentioned before, it asks you to partner up with somebody. Okay? Now, you're going, to be, you're going to have to understand the difference between a linear search, which is checking one at a time, potentially going through the whole list, and a binary search, which means checking against the middle term on a list, and then narrowing the search down to half the items with each comparison. 
That's a long way of saying, hey, if you're playing a guessing game and the numbers are 1 through 50, what's a good first guess? 25, right? What's Because that's halfway. And then if they say, hey, too high or too low, now you've eliminated half of the elements that are possible. So if, hey, if you guess 20, now of course if it's 25, you get it on the first try. But if they, hey, I'm thinking of number 39 and you say 25, I'm going to say that number is too low. So you'll know your next guess has to be higher. That's a binary search, okay? Um, where you're able to kind of go back and forth. Whereas, uh, so when you do this birthday guess in number eight, okay, when you do this guess in number eight, you're going to guess a birthday and the person's going to say too high or too low, okay? So if your guess is June 1st and their birthday is actually March 1st, they'll say that's too high, too, too low, excuse me. Is that right? Yeah, too high, too high. Okay, so I had to think about that for a second. All right, now, um, and then of course we'll talk about some questions you'll answer about this. And like I said, for this assignment, you're going to be answering these questions in the document as opposed to uh, in a log. And the reason why is because there's more questions in this case that are not necessarily related to Python uh, for this assignment. Okay? All right, so that concludes our little introduction to while loops. This assignment is yours to do. Have a nice day.